Today, I'm in the southwest corner of Colorado at Mesa Verde National Park. I'd like to start out by telling you five things I loved about this place. Number one, the Mesa Verde Visitor Center and gift shop is exceptionally nice. Number two, the 21 mile drive to the Chapin Mesa Museum and cliff dwellings is beautiful with multiple scenic overlooks along the way. Number three, the Spruce Canyon hiking trail is great. At 2.3 miles long and 538 feet in elevation gain, it's the perfect amount of challenge. Number four, the cliff dwellings from the year 550 AD are super cool. This area was inhabited by the ancestral Puebloans for more than 700 years. And number five, national parks are a great way to meet fellow outdoor adventurers. Now let's talk about the video itinerary. First, I'm going to talk about the best time to visit this place. Then I'm going to talk about the history of the area, the animals and rare species, the importance of fire, and tours at Mesa Verde. First of all, let's talk about the best time to visit. When I visited Mesa Verde National Park, a recent snowstorm had just dumped six inches of snow. Because of that, quite a few areas within the park were closed. So what are the best times to visit? The park is always open except under emergency conditions. The Mesa Verde Visitor Center is open nearly all year, only closed on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Day. Sites, picnic areas, and most trails are open from 8 a.m. until sunset. Some areas, including Wetherill Mesa, and overnight accommodations are closed during the winter months. So be sure to check the park's Facebook page for the most current information on closures. Now let's talk about avoiding the crowds. With around 600,000 visitors annually, Mesa Verde can seem overly busy at times. But the number of visitors is much lower just before and after the summer rush. The summer rush runs from June 15 through August 15. So if you visit during the first two weeks of June, or the last two weeks of August, you'll encounter fewer crowds. Another way to beat the crowds is to make the 12 mile drive to Wetherill Mesa. Typically, only about 5% of the park's visitors venture to this mesa, which actually has some of the park's most interesting archeological sites. You should know that as of January, 2024, Wetherill Mesa is closed for construction. Perhaps the best way to beat the crowds is to hike one of the backcountry trails. According to park rangers, the hiking trails aren't used very much, so they are a great way to find some peace and quiet. Now let's talk about the amazing history of this area. Mesa Verde National Park was established in June of 1906 by President Theodore Roosevelt. Its purpose is to research and preserve the archaeological heritage of the ancestral Puebloan people. It protects almost 5,000 archaeological sites, including 600 cliff dwellings built by the ancestral Puebloans, also known as the Anasazi, who inhabited Mesa Verde for more than 700 years, from 550 AD to 1300 AD. This is the largest archaeological preserve in the United States. Not only that, but these sites are some of the most notable and best preserved ruins in North America. The park's most famous sites are the cliff dwellings. The structures range in size from one-room storage units to villages of more than 150 rooms. The Cliff Palace is the most famous Mesa Verde dwelling, dating back more than 700 years and was likely once painted with bright colors. Recent studies reveal that the Cliff Palace contained 150 rooms and 23 kivas, and housed a population of approximately 100 people. The Pueblo people survived using a combination of hunting, gathering, and subsistence farming of crops, such as corn, beans, and squash. By 1285, following a period of social and environmental instability, driven by a series of severe and prolonged droughts, they abandoned the area and moved south. It's believed they moved to locations in Arizona and New Mexico. Now let's talk about the animals and rare species. 
Mesa Verde National Park is home to over 70 species of mammals, including bats, 200 species of birds, and 1,000 species of insects. The number of animal species found in the park can vary throughout the year as migratory animals pass through the area. Some of them include bobcats, coyotes, mule deer, rabbits, weasels, lizards, snakes, owls, and more. Mesa Verde also has multiple endemic species, meaning that they can only be found in this area. They range from seldom seen butterflies to flowers that exist nowhere else on the planet. The first one is the Kaibab Indra swallowtail butterfly. According to Colorado State University, the Kaibab butterfly has only been recorded in one other place, and that is the Grand Canyon. You can usually find them fluttering in May, June, July, or August. According to the U.S. Forest Service, they enjoy thistles and muddy areas. Just like any other butterfly, you might also find them at water sources or drinking nectar from bright colored flowers. Other rare butterflies at Mesa Verde include Spalding's Dotted Blue, Desert Green Hair Streak, and the Tawny Crescent. Number five is the Chapin Mesa Milk Vetch. One of the incredibly rare species at Mesa Verde is a delicate herb known as Chapin Mesa Milk Vetch. It was previously known as Schmoll's Milk Vetch. You can find the herb blooming from April until June in the shade of pinyon juniper woodlands. They are commonly seen on the Soda Canyon Trail, Petroglyph Trail, around Chapin Mesa Museum, and Mesa Top and Cliff Palace loop roads. Other endemic plant species at Mesa Verde include Cliff Palace Milk Vetch, Mesa Verde Wandering Aletes, and Mesa Verde Stick Seed. Now let's talk about the Mexican Spotted Owl. While the endangered Mexican Spotted Owl isn't exclusive to Mesa Verde by any means, it is unusual in Colorado. According to the National Park Service, they tend to like the terrain and elevation more in Arizona, New Mexico, and southern Utah. Because the owl is nocturnal, you'll probably only catch sight of them between sunset and sunrise. Other owls at Mesa Verde include the long-eared owl, the great horned owl, the northern pygmy owl, and the northern saw-wet owl. Now let's quickly talk about the importance of fire. While generally thought of as disastrous, in certain situations wildfires play an important and necessary role in a healthy ecosystem. In dry areas like Mesa Verde, naturally occurring fires have always been somewhat common. Trees and plant communities where burned give rise to new communities. All right, now let's talk about the cliff dwelling tours. To enter cliff dwellings, you must be on a ticketed tour with a ranger. Dates for the 2024 season have not yet been announced. Tour tickets can be purchased at www.recreation.gov. Tickets are available 14 days in advance on a rolling daily window. Demand for tour tickets is high, so they recommend reserving tickets as soon as they become available. When it comes to Mesa Verde tours, you've got multiple options. Number one, ranger-led tours. Number two, ranger-assisted tours. Number three, backcountry tours. And number four are self-guided tours. With a park ranger, visitors have the opportunity to partake in guided Mesa Verde tours at several sites throughout the summer months, while self-guided tour opportunities are available all year long. The ranger-led tours. On these hour-long tours, rangers lead groups through some of the largest and well-known ancestral sites in the park. Ranger-assisted tours. A ranger-assisted tour is a 30-minute timed entry experience that allows visitors to move through a cliff dwelling at their own pace. Rangers stationed along the route will facilitate and provide interpretation. Backcountry tours. On these special tours, Rangers guide groups into the park's backcountry to visit the park's lesser-seen cliff dwellings. 
Self-guided tours are a great option for visitors who did not purchase tickets in advance. First, let's talk about the Ranger-led and Ranger-assisted tours. First up is Cliff Palace. Cliff Palace is the largest cliff dwelling in North America. Built between 1190 and 1280, Cliff Palace was once home to approximately 100 people. Cliff Palace is limited to 45 participants per tour. As of 2022, Cliff Palace tours cost $5 and last about 45 minutes. Next up is Balcony House. A tour of Balcony House is one of the most adventurous in the park and not for the faint of heart. You will scale the face of a cliff via several tall ladders and squeeze your way through a narrow tunnel on your hands and knees. Balcony House is limited to 35 participants per tour. Next up is the Long House. Long House is the second largest cliff dwelling at the park. Visitors will see kivas, a small spring, a dance hall, and majestic canyon views. Long House is located on Wetherill Mesa, about one hour from the park entrance. Visitors will need to descend 130 feet to the cliff dwelling, climb two 15-foot ladders, and ascend 130 feet back to the trailhead. This round-trip hike is just over two miles. Tickets are $8 per person. Now let's talk about the adventurous backcountry tours. First up is the Mug House. Mug House is located on Wetherill Mesa. It was once home to about 80 to 100 residents. Twice per day, rangers lead a backcountry tour to this quiet cliff dwelling. Along the way, visitors can also experience an adobe cave, rock art, and spectacular canyon views. The hike to reach Mug House is considered strenuous. The trail includes a section of rock scrambling over boulders along the 2.25 mile round trip journey. The trail also has steep drop offs and switchbacks as it descends 100 feet. Tickets are $25 per person. Next up is Spring House. Spring House is located at the junction of Navajo Canyon and the Spruce Canyon Trail. Tours to Spring House are offered occasionally throughout the summer, usually only a few days per season. This eight hour, eight mile round trip hike is very strenuous and travels along an unpaved, uneven trail with an elevation change of 1500 feet and includes steep drop offs and switchbacks. Spring House is the largest unexcavated cliff dwelling in the park. It contains 87 rooms and seven kivas. Because of its extremely fragile nature, visitors on this tour will actually not enter the site. Tickets are $45 per person. Next up is the Square Tower House. During the summer months, tours are offered once every morning. Square Tower House includes the tallest standing structure in the park, a four-story tower constructed by the Puebloans. Additionally, you'll find rock art, a kiva with an intact roof, and original plaster and paint. All of this makes Square Tower House one of the most impressive cliff dwellings in Mesa Verde. The hike is a strenuous one mile round trip walk that takes about 90 minutes. Visitors will descend 100 feet on an uneven path with two ladders, switchbacks, and steep drop offs. There may also be rock scrambling. Square Tower House is limited to 10 participants per tour. Tickets are $25 per person. If you're unable to get a ticket, you can also view Square Tower House from above along the scenic Mesa Top Loop Road. And finally, let's talk about the self-guided tours. First up is the Cedar Tree Tower, which you saw earlier in my video. It's open from 8 a.m. until sunset every day. The Cedar Tree Tower features a small Tower Kiva complex. The Spruce Tree House, which you also saw in my video. Unfortunately, due to concerns for rock falls, this cliff dwelling is no longer accessible, but you can still view it from the Chapin Mesa Museum, as I did on my visit. Next up is the Step House. Step House is located on Wetherill Mesa near the Long House Trailhead. 
Currently, this is the only cliff dwelling at Mesa Verde that you can enter without a park ranger. There's a short trail through the dwelling as well as a short ladder used to peek into rooms. It takes about one hour to walk the trail and explore the dwelling. Step house may not be open during periods of low staffing. Finally are the Mesa top sites. Additionally, there are a few things to see besides cliff dwellings at Mesa Verde that you can explore on your own. The Badger House Trail on Weathero Mesa showcases surface sites where the Puebloans lived above the canyon. Similar sites can be seen at both the Farview Sites Complex and along the Mesa Top Loop Road. Hope you enjoyed my video of Mesa Verde National Park. I had planned on producing this video in just one day, but it ended up being so much information that it took me three days to produce. So I hope you enjoyed it. My next upcoming videos will be some downhill skiing short videos from Monarch Mountain on opening day. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Keep an eye open for more fun and exciting videos. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Winter's chill, bites your skin, and the weight of the world has settled in. You wonder if anything.